Hello everyone, my name is Marcus Shetter, and today I will be going over my future scanning project for Entrepreneurship 301. My topic, topic I chose to go over is golf and how much the sport has evolved as well as all the innovation and technology that goes into playing golf. First, I wanted to um, touch on the history of golf and where it exactly came from. Golf originally um, originated in Scotland and began in the 15th century, and it was banned at the beginning of its upbringing because Scottish Parliament thought it would take away too much time from military training. However, many still played and eventually rules were put in place. The rules were called articles and laws in playing at golf and were put into place in 1744. This was 20 years before the first ever 18 hole course was constructed at St. Andrews. This is a, a very famous course um, in Scotland, and a lot of people are playing there now. Um, tournaments are played there every year, um, but this was um, the first ever 18 hole course. Soldiers and immigrants were just some of the people that played a huge role in spreading the game around the world. By 1880, golf had been well known in Ireland, Australia, New Zealand, Canada, and many other parts of the world. America started to really take to the sport in the early 19th century. Since the beginning of golf, everything has changed a lot. Um, one of those things are the clubs that are used. For example, the clubs on the left are the typical set you would see back in the day. Uh, you may even hear people say, um, still say, hit it in between the screws. Since back in the day, there were there used to be screws in the clubs. And in the middle of those screws was kind of the sweet spot and where you wanted to actually hit the ball. Most old clubs were made of wooden shafts, wooden head components, Leather handles and the shaft and head of the club were actually bound by leather straps. Um, versus kind of new clubs that are made of mostly metal, shafts are either steel or graphite. The handles are rubber and the shafts are held together either by a hosel if you're using the driver and epoxy is usually used for um, um, those wedges and irons and putters. So expanding on those newer clubs, there is a ton of new technology and other components that go into the manufacturing, testing, and using of all the clubs. For example, there are many different types of iron heads and wedges. Um, those can be uh, cavity backs, muscle backs, and blade heads. Those are all going to kind of look a little bit different and kind of tailor to um, a specific golfer usually see pros and kind of more experienced people use the blade heads. Um, with driver heads, they are now extremely adjustable to accommodate for flight angle. If you want the shot to be lower or higher or to curve more left or right, along with adjustability, you have different head structures internally and externally. Um, Callaway had produced a driver head that had two columns on either side of the center point of the face of the driver. This helped with making the driver head kind of more stiff in order to be more forgiving and allow for better transfer of energy to the ball. And you'll also see kind of on that bottom left picture, you've got a um, picture of kind of just the aerodynamics of an F1 car and then the head a, of a driver. And so you kind of they, they've made them now so that they're pretty aerodynamic and able to kind of slice through the air pretty easily. So lastly, there are many different materials used for golf. Titanium uh, for clubs was used in the 1990s and came from the technology used in the aerospace industry and quickly became used by most of the companies that made golf clubs. Stainless steel is the most commonly used material in golf. This is because it is easy to cast and is durable enough for everyday play. Um, golf, golf equipment in general is very expensive. So um, you don't want to be putting something out there that's going to be um, wearing down in, in a couple rounds and having to buy some new stuff. So 
Um, the more durable, the better. Um, there was also carbon, steel, and zinc. Those were also used in the making of, of golf clubs. Zinc is the least expensive of all of them and are generally used for kind of those starter and junior kits that you might see for sale. Shafts are arguably one of the most important parts of the golf club since it is what transfers the force from you to the ball. Um, there are extra stiff shafts, stiff shafts and regular shafts. They may be the most important because there are many factors that go into the golf shaft um, that we decide to use. So for example, your swing speed, preferred ball trajectory, flight direction, tendency, and distance control, um, all of those can kind of be um, helped with what kind of shaft you use. Um, the heads and grips only get so, um, so different, but there's a ton of shafts out there. And since there are so many factors that go into the swing of the golf club, many companies are starting to use robots in order to test clubs and golf balls. Um, this allows them to get the most accurate results. In the back, you can see a picture that was taken of Rory McIlroy facing a robot one-on-one -on -one to see who could perform better on certain shots. So with robot testing, you're going to get consistent feedback that you just won't be able to get with a human. Uh, you can set the exact swing speed and angle to see how your pr products perform uh, versus others. So this is why manufacturers like Vice use robots to test their products and a lot of um, companies that review and survey products are using robots as well. However, there are cons to the robot and one of those is feel. Um, an actual golfer will be able to give you feedback on how a club actually feels in, in their hands when they are swinging and when they actually make contact. This kind of feedback is something that you can't really replicate with a robot. So next, I wanted to talk about the golf ball itself. Inside modern golf balls, there are several layers that give the ball the desired amount of compression based on your swing speed. So golf balls um, have three types of compression. It's going to be low, which will be graded at 65 or less. Medium, which will be graded between 66 and 89. And then high compression, which will be 90 plus. So on the right, you can see the golf ball compression tester, which is basically just um, squeezing the golf ball to give feed to get the feedback on how much resistance there is. Um, the ball in the tester came back at 104, so that would be a high compression golf ball, and that would be suited for players with a high swing speed, since they would be able to hit the ball harder and compress the ball better than a player with a slower swing speed. So if you've got a slow swing speed, you might want to pick a ball with low compression, and if you're higher, medium, and a very high swing speed, you're going to want a high compression golf ball. Another important part of the golf ball is the outside of the golf ball. Um, you can see on the um, outside of the golf ball here, there are all these dimples around it. Those are um, extremely important. They have a huge role to play in ball flight and distance. If you were to play with a smooth ball, it would only go about half the distance of one with dimples. This is because the smooth ball would create a large low pressure zone behind it as it moves through the air. Um, this is gonna cause a ton of drag and ultimately slow it down. Dimples allow tiny pockets of air to form and allows for turbulence to happen kind of in between the ball and the air flowing um, around it. This creates closer airflow and ultimately reduces the size of that low pressure zone behind the golf ball that creates the drag. Um, this is going to allow the golf ball to go further and straighter. So taking a look at the technology in golf today, there are many new things coming out every day. Some things that have been around for a little while now are the golf simulators. We see golf simulators being used for fun when it's a rainy day and even see them as businesses. 
it is becoming more common to see kind of a couple places in your hometown that allow you to rent out the simulator with a couple of your buddies for a few hours. Um, they may even serve you drinks, serve you food. Um, so they're they're pretty fun and you can have a great time with them. Some people even put them in their houses so they can play, um, you know, whenever, wherever. So you can just upload a course from halfway across the world and uh, be able to play it in your living room. So they are pretty cool. However, they are also used by the pros and coaches to receive super valuable feedback um, during the swing. Typically things that you won't be able to see with the naked eye. Um, the spin of the ball, um, which way it's spinning, the swing speed, ball, ball speed, um, club head speed, a bunch of different stuff like that. The angle of the um, club head as you're coming down and being in contact with the ball, which is obviously going to have a um, major impact on where the ball ends up or at least starts. So golf simulators contain hardware and software that work together to analyze and produce the results of a golfer's swing. Hardware are things like the hitting mat and screens that you can see on the top right, um, as well as projectors. And the software takes the measured parameters of your swing and ball path to simulate the shot and give you a display of that swing. So again, showing you the carry distance, total distance, um, the spin of the ball, club head angle, all that sorts of stuff. So essentially it will take the input, which is your swing, process the data and analyze it, and then deliver the output, which is giving you all of those numbers. There's also many different types of simulators that are used. Photometric simulators are camera-based systems that capture high-speed images and can be used indoors or outdoors. Next, there is infrared simulators. These emit light signals in order to capture the position of the club head. Lastly, we have the radar-based simulator. A popular one you commonly see is the TrackMan. Um, this can be seen on the bottom right. These track the ball with the help of Doppler radar technology. These radars emit a microwave signal from the unit, which bounces back from the golf ball after impact. So these are kind of used um, best in outdoors. And at the bottom there, you can kind of see all the equipment that goes into using some of these, um, these simulators. So you'll be able to hook it up to the simulator will we'll actually emit the microwave signals. And then on the computer there, you can see all your numbers and stuff. And then on the top right, that picture, um, that one is most likely using both radar um, the Doppler radar technology from the um, radar-based simulator and also photometric simulator. So you can, can have um, two in one to get kind of the best output. But along with technology in golf, VR is becoming more and more popular. There is now Golf Plus that can be purchased and played on an Oculus set that you can see on that top picture. You can also see the golf handle that can also be purchased to make it a bit more realistic. There is also range finders that allow you to look at something um, like the flag stick or a tree that's in front of you. Um, this can be hundreds of yards away and it'll tell you exactly how many yards away that object is. Um, so it comes in very handy when you're actually playing. And then some can even adjust um, the yardage based on the slope if you're higher than the flag stick or lower. Um, so those come in again very handy while actually playing and can be used um, every day. So golf is no longer a game only for um, you know wealthy white men. It's becoming more and more popular around the world. Some of this credit is due to YouTube, TikTok, and other social media platforms that have made golf a part of some people's everyday lives, even if they aren't playing every day. Um, there's no doubt that golf will continue to innovate in the best ways possible. It's an amazing sport, great networking activity, and is always an amazing way to get out of the house for hours on end. Thank you guys.